Hi everyone. So um, I have wanted to do this next project, this next series for the longest time. And that is to go down alphabetically every country and to make a dish, um, either it's national dish or maybe you know, they have a specific vegan or vegetarian recipe to showcase and to really explore with you that way. And so I get to learn something, you get to learn something as well. It's a little bit ambitious because I want to take proper time between each country and really learn about like the weather, the geography, the people, the culture, the religion, and how that translates to, I guess, you know, the, the crops that are produced and then also like how that all together translates into the dishes that they end up cooking. So that, you know, when I bring you a dish, there's gonna be a story behind it and you can see how, you know, everything links together. Um, we start off on Afghanistan, A is for Afghanistan. Um, it is a particularly hard country to discuss, especially uh, as an American. I remember, you know, for, for most of my life, uh, we have been there. So um, let's go into a little bit of the topic first and then we can continue talking about it because uh, it's not the easiest country to engage with and I've had a really hard time just like writing things and how to, yeah, how to, how to really talk about it. So we're just going to go uh, into, into talking about a little bit about Afghanistan first. So I start off on a BBC documentary. I watched a BBC documentary from the 1950s, an American photographer uh, called Glenn Foster. I don't know if he was part engineer and part photographer as well, because he was going to Afghanistan for a job. And um, he traveled throughout the country with his um, Afghan assistant uh, and he pretty much documented the country and he said uh, Afghanistan is going to be the place to be like it's going to be the place that people travel to uh, and he showed kind of all of these like amazing like foods and amazing scenery and um, it just it very much felt like a different time the 1950s um, in Afghanistan ruled by different People had a king back then. It was coming out of, you know, the world wars and Afghanistan was looking to open up to, to a lot of new things. Um, and so everything felt different. Like I think America had a very different relationship uh, with Afghanistan. So uh, geographically, uh, Afghanistan is a landlocked country in Central Asia. So. Uh, looking at where it is, it was a major crossroad between Europe and between Asia and between India uh, during the Silk Road, you know, times. And I imagine because of its, you know, very strategic location, especially in the cities where, you know, people would have been, I imagine it was a very metropolitan place full of like different merchants, full of different ideas flowing through from the East, from the West. In more present times, this strategic location and it kind of bordering, you know, the Soviets, it made it a very contentious region for, you know, other imperial powers like the UK and the US to come in and try to, you know, take control of it um, as well. Um, we mentioned geographically that it was in a landlocked country, uh, mostly mountainous, mostly deserts. So it makes Afghanistan really hard to travel through. It makes Afghanistan really hard to also live in as well. And so most of the people end up residing in between the mountains, in the valleys, and then whatever plains or flatlands that they have. Um, when I was watching kind of videos on how rural people would cook and how rural people would live, one of the hardest things to start cooking was to get water. Like some people had to travel really long and then there was like a water pump and, you know, getting water into mountainous and desertous regions is, is, <laughs> is, is quite tough. And so um, weather-wise, 
spring and summer, super hot, super dry, winters, super, super cold. And so in the spring and summer, when the waters melt from high up in the mountains, um, that is where the water kind of deposits in between the mountains and, and how people get water. But I think a lot of it is also diverted to uh, neighboring countries like Pakistan, like Iran as well. So uh, a, a big thing in Afghanistan is simply is, is getting water. Water creates life, it creates food, it creates an economy. Um, okay. So we've talked about the geography, we've talked about the weather. Uh, now I want to talk about the agriculture and, you know, the foodstuffs that they end up growing. And, and then we'll get to the recipe and how that um, impacts the recipe. So uh, they say that only 12% of the land in Afghanistan is arable and actually only 6% of it is cultivated. So there's not a lot of land to work with here, but it does employ, agriculture does employ 40% of the workforce. So uh, so it's a pretty, so it's a pretty big deal. When you think about places with a lot of mountains, a lot of dry land, um, things, crops that come into mind are usually going to be like your cereal grains, your barley, your wheat. Um, they have rice growing in certain regions as well. That tends to work well in mountainous regions. Uh, when you're talking about vegetables, root vegetables that need very well um, drained soil. So things like potatoes, carrots, those root vegetables, they tend to do better in this kind of an environment. And I, I drew a map here, but uh, essentially depending on, you know, the, the topography, so you have like the plains, and the plains tend to have more of the fruits. So Afghanistan produces, you know, pomegranates and a lot of like dried dr fruits for dried fruits, so like apricots uh, and whatnot. And so the, those tend to grow in the plains a little bit better and then up in the mountains you have more of the, the cereal grains. With agriculture, I think we should mention poppies as well. We should mention opium um, as well. So mountainous regions, it's very dry. It's very hard to transport through, but apparently poppies grow, uh, poppies grow really well in drought. And in addition, they travel long distances really well. So it makes for, the, I guess the crop of choice, um, for a lot of the farmers. But in addition, they say that growing poppies for opium, uh, farmers make something like 17 times more money than they would make, you know, compared to wheat, you know, obviously. And so I, I could see a country that is devastated by war and having troubles in their economy, you know, like farmers, why not? Like that's, that's what I will be um, growing. And there's kind of a big history with opium producing as well. It kind of goes back to the fifties, but also that, you know, poppies and opium was used medicinally, you know, in ancient times as well. So uh, there's a big kind of long history there. Um, places that have tried to, you know, take over uh, Afghanistan, like the Soviets, like um, the US, like the Taliban. Um, to some degree along the way, they have encouraged the growth of poppies and, and, and you know, opium production because that kind of money that it brings in will fund whatever, you know, resistance or whatever powers that uh, people want to put in charge for, for weapons, for, you know, different things. And so uh, it's, it's complicated. I think now they are trying to move a little bit away from opium and, and move that towards saffron. But um, yeah, it's actually, ugh, we'll go into it a little bit more. In the 2010s, I guess there started to be more or cheaper technology for water pumping. Uh, going into Afghanistan and we talked about you know water is important literally for everything and so when it became easier to you know pump water it became easier to you know have agriculture and then also to be growing you know some of these fields and unfortunately because uh, unfortunately it's it's very complicated right um, Taliban wants to kind of curb this opium production it has also tried to curb uh, access to water pumping technology and of course what that means for people what that means for food food stock and food supply as well um, impacts that so 
Yeah, it's very it's very interesting to to read about. So definitely, like even if you wanted to check your Wikipedia, just like reading that through, very 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 useful.、Um, so today we're finally here. Today I'm gonna make the national dish of、um, of Afghanistan, and that is a pilaf rice, usually made actually with mutton, but. Uh, obviously, I don't. I don't eat meat, so we are going to just make the vegetable version of it and leave that out.、Um, I think a big thing with this series as well is like I'm not really trying to like just go into a country and being like, oh, let me just let me just veganize this dish and change everything. I want to be showing you the original recipes. I want to be showing you maybe like the bloggers or the channels that I am getting this from,、um, and I want. You all to give me feedback as well. Like I, this is this is gonna be new for me. Every country is gonna be new for me.、Um, I'm not used to making you know these types of recipes. So you know if I if I do something where you're like oh yeah like you know sometimes we do this as well or maybe oh typically we do this and and maybe you could you know do that next time. Let me know. Like if I'm making a recipe and you're like yeah you know usually we do it like this. You know, in a nice way.、Uh, you know, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. Teach me. I want to know more. And likewise, like for the countries that will be coming up, I'm gonna just be going alphabetically down the list. Give me suggestions. Give me like, you know, are there special tools? Are there special equipment that you you would use? Are there special methods、uh, for different things? You know, I want to learn. I know that the community wants to learn as well. And you know, read the comments and see、uh, what that is. So. Have that be put in.、Um, so I'm going to take out the mutton for me,、um, and just do the vegetarian version of it.、Uh, I couldn't help myself because I wanted to make a pastry, so I'm making、uh, the famous Afghan bolani as well. And it is essentially a、uh, a wheat pastry that is stuffed with potatoes, that is stuffed with、um, kind of like a chive mix as well. Uh, it's so so simple because it just really has like a little bit of salt in it and 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 these vegetables and it's it's so savory it is so so good. So、um, what I wanted to I know people are like I'm sure people were looking at this on the side.、Um, I wanted some authentic kitchen equipment、uh, when I was making this. So this is an Afghan pressure cooker made in Kabul,、um, and I was so lucky because I contacted this company called Tandoor Adventures. Thank you so much for sending it to me. They specialize in like these amazing and beautiful like Tandoor ovens. They also have you know、uh, things like this, this Afghan pressure cooker that just looks so so. Handsome and amazing, and so、um, I'm going to be putting their information down below. Definitely check them out if you are interested in kind of like different gear for your、uh, kitchen.、Um, they actually did say that usually this is used outdoor for camping, but、uh, it works perfectly fine in the kitchen as well. Just you know, just、uh, be careful, and you know, maybe I'll I'll do an actual video on like you know how to clean, how to use, how to. You know, work this guy. But essentially, I will be、uh, I'll be using this to make both of my、uh, recipes today. So it's actually、uh, quite quite exciting. I know that they sell through Amazon in you know the U.S. in the U.K. I imagine in a lot of other countries as well. So,、um, but if if possible, obviously it's good to just buy directly through you know a small business or through a business themselves and not always use Amazon. But you know, obviously it is、uh, it is. Uh, available、uh, in both places. So yeah, thank you so much to Tandoor Adventures for、uh, sending me this.、Uh, so yeah, enough enough with the talking, right? So、uh, let's get to the recipe. I hope you guys all enjoy.
so usually what I see is the ones in the half moon shape are typically uh, shallow fried in oil and then the ones that are triangular uh, they're usually baked so uh, it really depends at home I usually don't really like frying so I'll probably just bake uh, these but uh, definitely up to you
it's actually quite nice because the rice itself is um, a little bit sweet, which I always like because of the raisins. And then this is, I mean, obviously this is not too oily at all. And inside is, it's nice and savory. Um, I'd say even if you didn't like potatoes because of, I guess it's just really like salt, <laughs> a little bit of pepper, but it's, it's simple, but it's really quite nice. <laughs>